Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we've got another spray gun review. So the gun we got today is the ANI Black Skull Edition. So I've recently started using the ANI Black and they've just released a limited edition ANI Black Skull Edition. So here we go, it's a beautiful looking gun and I tell you what, they do perform pretty well but we'll get into the spray painting in a few minutes but Thought I'd just give you guys a look in the kit to see what you get. So as you can see, it comes with three air caps. So there's one on the gun as well. Take that little condom off first and you'll see that there's one on the gun and two inside the box. So uh, 1.3 kit is what I decided to go with. And then you've got the clear, the WB and the HVLP air cap. So personally, I'm not the biggest fan of HVLP guns at all. So I've been using the clear cap for clear and the WB for my waterborne base coats and they've been doing very well. So you may also notice that there's a little notch on the back of the gun there and that's where the digital gauge clips into. So it's a removable digital gauge. If you so wish you could take it off when you're giving the gun a good clean. Um, but I've found that for regular daily use, I don't even need to take it off because it does need a clean as well. Like when you've been clearing with the gun, um, you need to clean that clear overspray off it. So it is um, uh, solvent and thin as resistant. As you saw there, it weighs in at about 455 grams. That's just the gun body by itself. So, you know, it's, um, it's not ultra heavy. It's not ultra light. It's about what you would expect for a gun of this size. Um, it's got a nice feel in the hand, and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel um, uncomfortable in the hand or anything like that. Um, some of the knobs are in slightly different positions than the Devilbuses, which I'm used to. The main thing is that the air adjustment knob is up the top instead of being down the bottom, which um, most of the Devilbus are down the bottom. So I find it a little bit easier to adjust the air on my Devilbus. It's actually not a big deal at all because what I've been doing lately is actually adjusting from the wall and I might do some micro adjustments on the gun itself but most of the time I plug it in and it just stays there. I might like dial it back a little bit but I've got it so that um, f full noise on the gun is exactly two bar um, and I've, I mentioned before that I've got the ANI Black as well. So this is an ANI Black, but it's a limited edition ANI Black, right? So the other one that I've got doesn't have the digital gauge on it, and I put a normal cheetah valve down the bottom of that gun, and that reads like 40 psi, whereas the digital gauge reads 2 bar. So I think the same thing is going on as what was going on with the DV1, if you read the pressure down at the base of the gun, it's gonna be higher than what it is when it gets up to the top of the gun where this digital um, gauge is. So just keep that in mind when I'm talking about pressures, depending on where you read the pressure from, you'll actually get totally different readings. So this gun here says that we're running it two bar, but that's because we're reading it from up at the top of the gun. Whereas if I was reading that from down at the base of the gun, it would be reading 2.7 bar, or around 40 psi so yeah when i'm reading down the bottom of the gun i do like to run them at 40 psi so yeah hopefully that didn't confuse you too much but it's not that hard to get your head around the fact that yeah you'll get a different pressure setting from you just think about it with your airline like if you look at your compressor you're going to have something like eight bar but then by the time you come up to your um, spray booth you might be running i don't know three or four bar and then when you get down to the gun you might only have your two bar so your pressure obviously does drop as it travels through the airlines but yeah i don't know if you noticed but that was one hell of a ginormous spray fan on it and that was after winding it in three quarters of a turn so I go to full fan and then still come in three quarters of a turn and that that got me that ginormous fan that you saw me uh, put the clear coat down on this Porsche with. So, so as you saw, like a nice um, OEM style looking finish. And yeah, like I've found it easy to replicate the factory finishes with this gun in the clear coat. And also it's really good for uh, base coat. I've only just started using it for base coat, but to be honest, I actually prefer it to the Pro Lights because it's got a bigger fan. I just find that it, um, 
I don't know, like the drop coat is easier to put on with the uh, Stando Blue. Just having that larger fan, and speed actually is an issue with your Stando Blue. Like, basically, when you're spraying this Stando Blue, um, the worst thing that you can have happen is have the base coat drying as you're applying, or even have that base coat blender drying as you're spraying. Um, more so on the metallic, like the light metallic colors, but you still don't want it on any color. Um, so yeah, having an ultra fast gun is actually quite advantageous. So I just thought I'd give you guys a quick look at some base coat application, but that was with the, um, the A&I Black, as, uh, as you see here, we're onto clear coat already. So just thought I'd give you guys a, a bit of a look at a couple of different um, stages and different jobs. So you might have noticed that I did leave, intentionally leave like a bit of a thicker orange peel on that Porsche. Whereas with this job here, you might notice that I'm actually going a little bit faster with that first coat of clear. I'm doing that for a good reason. That's to set up the finish. So I've found, especially it's it's been brilliant being back on the standoff clears. I found that I can uh, manipulate the orange peel by just spraying that first coat a little bit tighter, a little bit faster, getting it on um, like less material on there on your first coat. Um, and that will leave you with that more glassy sort of Japanese style finish. Whereas if you want that more European style finish, like you don't have to uh, leave any reducer out or any, you don't have to muck around with anything. Just put that first coat on a little bit heavier, leave it for a little bit longer between coats and you'll get that more European style finish. So yeah, it's been a real pleasure being back on the standoffs. And I tell you what, these guns are just amazing. So I'm actually really enjoying going to work these days. And yeah, it's just, just a pleasure. So I'm, I'm <laughs> just have a look at the size of that fan, guys. It's ginormous and blisteringly fast. As I say, this is the 1.3, but previously I was using the 1.2 for clear. And the 1.2 is actually surprised, still surprisingly fast. Like, you're not, it doesn't feel like you're choking. It doesn't feel like you're going too slow or anything like that. So, yeah, like I would nearly say, you know, 1.2 is probably better for the colder months, 1.3 better for the warmer months. But if I did have to choose one, I would probably go for the 1.3 because I guess you can always sort of wind the fluid in need be. Um, but it's obviously going to be harder to speed up a slightly slower gun. Um, but yeah, I think you'd be honestly pretty safe with either the 1.2 or the 1.3. So the regulars of the channel will know that I've been a pretty big fan um, of the... So the regulars of the channel will know that I've been a big fan of ANI spray guns for quite some time. But it's only recently that I've got onto their flagship spray gun. And I tell you what, I'm, I've been blown away. Like I've always loved the atomization and the large fan. And so the main reason I like their ANI R150s and R160s, well, I guess it's a combination. Like they had good build quality, but they were affordable. So this gun here, you know, I sort of had my reservations at the start. I thought, oh, you know, like, is the build quality gonna be there? Um, Cause you know, they're obviously a little bit more expensive than the entry level guns. Um, but the atomization was always pretty good to be honest, even on the um, entry level guns. But um, yeah, they've nailed it with the atomization. They have improved it a bit, I think, like a nice full wide massive fan on them. Um, as I say, they do like the high pressure. They do like to operate on the high pressure. Like if you um, try running this gun here at two bar or 29 PSI at the base of the gun, it's just not gonna atomize properly. So it does need that higher pressure, um, like 40 PSI, which is like 2.7 bar at the base of the gun, um, or else, yeah, you're not gonna get the proper atomization. But in saying that, I have actually found that, like I don't use any more clear or base coat than I would with my pro lights or any other gun for that matter. So I've been thinking about it lately and it's like, they nearly got the best of a lot of the spray guns. So it's like, the price of a pro light, if not cheaper, um, they've got the massive fan of the SADA and you get the nice flat finishes of the Supernova. So they've definitely done a good job. Now, there will be links in the description to where you can buy one of these. I don't think Spray Guns Direct have heaps of them, so you may want to get in quick, but in saying that, we're hoping to get a Gunman edition with a few tweaks made 
of this ANI black. So yeah, the base gun underneath it is the ANI black. This is the skull edition, but we're hoping to work alongside with ANI and get a gunman edition ANI black. So yeah, don't be too bothered if you miss out because some big things may be coming in the future. And I actually just had a look at the price of this limited edition here. And it comes in at 600 Australian dollars. So that's including the case, three different air caps, and the digital gauge and the full seal kit. So uh, obviously you've got the, the cleaning brush and the spanner as well. So to be honest, that represents pretty damn good value. So that's the limited edition and including all those extras. To me, that's like probably cheaper than you can even find a pro light for these days. So I reckon that's actually pretty awesome. One other thing just before we go is that it only uses like a little bit more air than the Pro Light TE20. So that's CFM. Don't quote me exactly on the CFM, but you'll probably be able to find that. But on the other hand, it may not be the best for those of you playing at home. You might have noticed um, a lot of overspray. So anyway, guys, be sure to stay tuned for the channel. There should be some more updates on this gun. And I would really like to get a Gunman Edition done one day. Anyway, guys, be sure to let us know your thoughts. Are you sold on it? Are you skeptical? Do you want one? Um, I'd be definitely interested. And if any of you do go and get one, be sure to let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Add me on Instagram if you can't seem to get a reply out of me on YouTube because I'm a pretty busy man these days. But as I say, there will be a link to where you can buy this gun from Spray Guns Direct in the description.